This is Twit. So the Nest Hub 2. And Stacy, you've had this for a little while. You've been, I imagine you've been sleeping with this uh, uh, to the side of your bed, analyzing your sleep and giving you data that you can do something with. I don't know. Well, what do you think? <laughs> yes and no. So let's see. Let's see what you can see. So I moved it out of my bedroom. So you can't see my sleep data, but you can see... Like right there, it's telling you I have no sleep data, but it's giving me, you know, the typical Google home screen. Possibly in dark mode, Jeff, don't look. No! Uh, <laughs> I'm asleep, though. It doesn't matter. <laughs> so um, I'm, I'm trying to see. One of the things I didn't like about it is you have to use the Google Fit app. Okay, actually, let's start this whole thing off with like a formal review. Here's what we're talking about. We're talking about this device. It's a seven-inch uh Google Nest display that sits by your bedroom um, or that they want it to sit by your bedroom because 20% of people apparently put these devices in their bedroom and Google is like, oh, I know. Well, I'll work that angle. Um, right. Normally, so, and it has Google's solely radar in it. Um, and that is what it uses to track your sleep. And it tells you, I'd show you, but right now the photo is of my daughter. So I'm not going to show you that. When I get to a photo of something that I can show you, I'll show you how it shows your sleep tracking. You opt into it. It is all right. Uh, I had a real issue with it deciding that I was sleeping when I was just laying in bed reading. And Google will tell mm. you, no, no, it knows you're just reading in bed and it shows you that. But mine actually showed me as being asleep. So it also uses, it has three mics and it uses the mics to determine if you're snoring or if you are uh, coughing. What I did discover is that while well, sometimes I do snore, sometimes my husband snores and Google can't really tell who's snoring. It can tell that I'm tossing and turning because it only notices me, but it doesn't know who's snoring. So that's one thing. It, the sleeping it was pretty tied to my Fitbit when it worked, um, I will say I absolutely hated when I didn't sleep well and Google would be like, you slept too much last night or you need to improve your bedtime. I was like, shut up, Google. Do not tell me what to do. Um, I got really upset with Google. I was not prepared for those kind of emotions that came out. Um, partially, I think, because Google, to, my Google is a man, uh, male's voice. And I did not need a man telling me how I slept. Uh, <laughs> don't, <laughs> like, don't man sleep. Don't man sleep me. I really think that was it. I'm just like, normally it doesn't bother me that Google uses a man's voice. But when Google was like judging my sleep, I was like, oh, no. <laughs> it's super easy. It's super comfortable. If you want to track your sleep and, you know, you don't want to like spend a lot of time on it. This is fine. It's not going to change the way you sleep unless you're just ready for that. Um, just because, you know, you know you've got to go to bed at a regular time every night, right? Uh, yeah. You know you got to wake up at Allegedly. the same time every day. But it's not like you're actually going to do that unless you're going to do it, right? Google's not going to change that. It can do things like suggest that you lower your lights and it'll be like, do you want us to lower your lights? at the best time for you to go to sleep. And you're like, mm. uh, no, I do not want you in charge of my life, Google. So <laughs> anyway, um, home control is fine. It listens a lot better. It sounds so much better than the original one. There is no camera on it. And I mean, I like this. I put it in my office for now um, just because I've got a Fitbit. So I already know how I sleep. Um, yeah. Questions? Well, some of the stuff you mentioned there, like the the whole warning of, okay, you should probably start dimming your lights right about now. Um, I think that's a good idea for people that don't quite understand, you know, circadian rhythms and, and, and getting your body tuned up for proper rest, right? Mm -hmm. That is that is true. Um, yeah. I'd be like Stacy. I'd be arguing with it. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm not ready to. Don't nanny me. No, and that's why you sound the way you sound every day. <laughs> yeah. I yeah. mean, 
it's, it's up to you. If you want, I mean, is it is it helpful? The, oh, the other thing I will say, because I did voice matching, if I, mm. and I don't know what it'll tell me, how did I sleep last night? It looks like you don't have any sleep data recorded for that day. Okay. But if you had asked that and you were here, Jeff, it wouldn't actually tell you because it's tuned to my voice. So it ties like the sleep data to my voice, which is nice. So I guess if my husband wanted to know how he slept, he couldn't. <laughs> uh, right. right. Um, so that was nice. I, I don't know what else to tell you. I'll what are the three question. dots on the top, Stacey? In oh. Microphone? Can, I, I don't know what y'all can see. Hold on. This is the solely thing right here. The center thing, thing, okay. The center thing, and then those are microphones, I believe. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. okay. Um, did you ever have the Pixel 4 or the 4XL? Or was it only the 4XL that had the solely radar? Or it I can't was remember if it was only, did, yeah. But. Okay, here's a picture. This is what it looks like. See that little thing up there in this corner? If you have yeah, sleep uh -huh. sensing on, that's how you know, and it's always on there, so you know that it's going to try to like watch you sleep. Ah, got it. So that's a little. What a cute doggy! Who's a good know, puppy? Who's a good yeah, dog? Cute puppies. Um, do you does the solely radar make more sense for a device like this than it did on a mobile yes. phone? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Oh, and you can start like this is actually kind of neat in my office setting or in the kitchen. Like I don't actually have to touch the screen if it's playing stuff. I can swipe to the next song or. Pause the music. I think this is pause. I haven't actually. Paused How it. reliable is that for you, actually? Uh, I got up to four feet away, and it was reliable. Oh um, wow! So because I can't say that about the four XL phone. Just swiping through Spotify or what have you it oh, is God. the worst experience. Just, I'm like, just pick up the phone, Aunt She's. And tap the button. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'd be surprised <laughs> if anyone that has that phone actually like is still like trying to make that stuff work because it never you worked. You know what, y'all? Well it's probably me. about three feet away now that I'm That's impressive. About it. Still. Yeah. That's impressive. I mean, it's That's probably a larger sensor. Offers. I it imagine was, it's, it's a larger sensor. Yeah. It's nice if you're like playing in, like if you're in the kitchen or your hands are dirty. Like I do it because right. I'm lazy and it's far away on my desk, but everything has to be cleared in front of it. So it's not like, like if there's something Got in front it. of it, obviously won't see it. Right. I'm literally having my morning routine of washing my face, brushing my teeth or whatever. And I have music going. And every now and then I want to hear something with a little more. Oomph. So I swipe in the air like a Jedi to tell Spotify to go to a different track. Never happened. And the phone was right <laughs> there on the sink with me. You know, it's, it's right there. Never yeah. happened. Is this, is this how much? I, I can't remember how much this is. Oh, boy. I think it's $99. I think, it's I think so, bucks. too. Um, yeah, I just wanted to just, yeah, $99. You could put this in your bathroom. There's no camera. There are microphones. Right. Um, there is a physical switch for the off button for the mic. Um, so if you wanted to stick that in your bathroom and use solely, you could like, it wouldn't, it wouldn't have the sounds of you peeing, I guess, if you're worried about that. Um, <laughs> and then I don't think it would but work. While you're in the shower, shower, you could change tracks. Well, me, I'm like, I don't know how far away Maybe. your shower is and the moisture yeah. rating on this thing, but mm. yeah, I was gonna say it's. Like, I wonder how well it would stand up to, yeah. Oh yeah, the, the humid stuff. bathroom. Whoops. Yeah, there is that <laughs> aspect, but um, sweet. I mean, a hundred okay. bucks is not that expensive. I'm just. No. I, I know that the marquee feature of this, or at least the feature that Google is really touting, is the sleep tracking, and I'm just in that camp where I'm like, how, like, how important is like knowing sleep data about myself to me? It's not at all. But I realize other people have different needs. I just don't know what I would do with that information. Like, I know when I wake up in the morning whether I had a good sleep or not. So <laughs> I'll tell that. you what: <laughs> you'll stop drinking alcohol because, mm. good golly, gosh. I sleep, I mean, after five days of no alcohol, I can totally see it in my sleep like, pattern. And it's, oh, yeah. I mean, it's really distressing, I'll be honest. I'll be like, oh, man, do I want to sleep? Do I want to have some restorative deep sleep tonight? Or do I want to have a glass of wine? Right. I mean, these are terrible I was gonna decisions. Say that, uh, I was going to say something similar along those lines, Mr. Howell. It, that information is important if you're someone like me that knows they have bad sleeping habits to be able to get some type of analysis on what happened the previous day and previous night's sleep to try to uh, 
combat that and, and lead up to a better night's sleep. The days mm. that the days that I really, really push myself physically, um, you know, doing calisthenics or whatever, I'm assuming I'm going to just crash and, and just sleep like the best ever. And most mm-hmm. of the time, it's not that. It, it, it's usually the inverse of that. I'm wide, mm-hmm. you know, waking up more often and stuff like that. So I have to try to curtail how much I push myself during the day because I still want to sleep, but yet be able to recover properly to be able to perform the next day. So, yeah, mm-hmm. that data is pretty important. I wonder, since we have the Pixel 4 XL, would we, would we be able to get something like this in that phone? Because you have phone stands out there that you can put on your nightstand and it has the the sensor right there. I wonder if we could do that in the future. I don't think, I mean, since they didn't put in the five, I don't think Google's investing on the solely on the phone. No. And no, all of the, the phone, this is important. So. All of the data, all your sleep radar data is processed locally yeah. on the device and only the insights are sent to the cloud. So that's really important. And I mean, sure. your phone processor could do it, but. I mean, I'm guessing <laughs> I'm guessing the the sensor that provides the the solely radar capabilities is pretty small on the phone because it needed to be, and is, uh-huh. I'm guessing it's not as small on the Nest Hub because mm-hmm. that's a larger form factor device. It gives more distance. That's probably why on the phone you have to be really close to it for it to register anything. Mm-hmm. Uh, versus the Nest Hub, if you can get close enough feet. to I don't just think pick you can it do up. any of those interactions <laughs> on the phone from three feet away. I don't think it's going to do nothing when you try yeah. that. Um, oh, I so did want to say there's that too. There's one other thing about this that gives me pause, and I don't like the way that Google did this. I see why they did it. They talked about this in the the, the launch for this. They said, "Hey, for now, the sleep sensing is a free feature," and when right. I was doing the, when I was doing the calibration, there was a tiny little message on the screen that said something about uh, the Nest Aware subscription, like warning me that it might become part of that. And I was like, whoa. Um, But it's possible that after Google figures out what it's going to do with Fitbit, it will turn the, the sleep tracking into a paid feature, which means, like, I hope they don't do it this way. I mean, at least they're trying to tell you but if the sleep yeah. sensing is really important to you on this device, know that you may end up having to pay more for it after the, hmm. like in like a year. Mm. Yeah. Which is a yeah, little that, sucky. And, and to not know the details of that now is kind yeah. of, especially if you're buying the device for that. That's. Uh, I feel like Google should ideal. probably, the best way to implement that would be like going forward for buyers of this device, it's going to cost X. But if you already right. have it, you yeah. got a year free. Right. Yeah, something like or that. Or free forever, Kinda, you know. Like I, I, I realized maybe maybe it's uh, maybe it's me not understanding what it takes to run a business, but I kind of feel like, you know, this is Google we're talking about. They 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 were they were floating free storage on photos for years with how you know how many tr- they trillions of fiber of- networks around the country at cost like this billions. is sleep data like, <laughs> <laughs> the comparison's way different like just why why pay for sleep data like i don't know give, no, because give us for free if you think jeff like l- let's talk about what sundar wants and thinks the future of if it's not mm-hmm. slabs of glass and advertising it is services yeah so yeah that's yeah. right Wearables yeah, okay. having that day. I'm just putting that out there. And 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 yeah. and recent, I think recently said that you know, you were talking about what the decades of the net before and that we're passing out of the advertiser supported net into the from his view, because and recent Horowitz thinks it's a media company, into paying creators directly net. But a different way you can look at it is you go go from the ad supported net to the service net. Now the problem is very few winners there. Very few people aren't going to, you know, there's only so many places you're going to spend your money on stuff, on services, on content, on anything. Uh, and and the marketing cost of it is extremely high. So I don't know that that's any Valhalla you arrive at. But nonetheless, you're right, Stacey. Services with value, I think packaged services with value. Uh, then, the, then the brand matters. Then do you trust Google to do all these services for you? Do you trust Amazon right, to do it right. for you? Do you trust Facebook? No, you don't. Um, and so on. Yep. Hmm. 
Well, cool. Okay, so it sounds like you're you're pretty positive on this device. I mean, there's obviously a couple of asterisks involved. The sleep, you know, the potentially having to pay for the sleep data somewhere down the line, something that someone's going to have to ask themselves. But 100 bucks for this device, even if it doesn't do the sleep data, if if you take sleep data and sleep sleep tracking out of the equation, is it a recommend? Is it worth 100 bucks? Oh, sorry. Oh, if you don't have an Oh, now we, now we hear you. Oh, I was like... I don't know what happened. If, okay. <laughs> if you don't have a, a Nest, a Google Nest display, I don't know what the heck to call these things right now, um, or you want one without a camera, this is a great one. If you already have one, unless you listen to a lot of music, I mean, it'd be worth upgrading if you really care about the quality of the sound. It's not going to sound as good as like the Nest Audios, but it sounds way better than the first small Nest right. hub display. Then you'd upgrade, but yeah, for ninety nine bucks, for ninety nine bucks, it's a great digital picture frame. I mean, yeah, the sunrise alarm is nice. I, I, I feel like it's okay. 